This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. And today, as my special guest, I have former WWE and WCW manager Terry Reynolds, aka Alexandra York, aka Marlena, who has some really cool makeup on today. And she is outside on her mother's porch. How are you today? Dude, like this is isolation for me. So. It's 60 acres. Um, it's my family, part of my family's farm where I used to come almost every weekend when I was a small girl. And my mom has 60 acres. And um, yeah, she has like a 360 degree wraparound porch. And there's a swing. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of it. And then we're going to. Oh, we're having an issue again. Say that again. Uh, we we cut off about the last ten seconds. Your 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 no. screen froze. Yeah. All right, all right. Tell tell me. Um, do you remember the last thing before? So the last thing off? you said was your porch goes around three hundred sixty degree. Okay. Also, one other thing, oh. your uh, your right eye was a little out of the camera. So now it's now it's oh, okay. in the. Okay, there you go. I need to take off my jacket. Hold on one second. I'm burning up. It's Florida. So hold on. This is ridiculous. Well, we still had snow up here in Canada a couple of days ago where I am, so you're lucky. I only, wish, I only wish that I could be in Canada for the snow. Like, that's my favorite thing. All right, so anyway, so let's go back for a second. So, um, I wait, let me ask you one quick, quick question. You said I'm, I have some kind of special makeup. What, what do you mean? Like, I haven't seen your eye makeup done in the fashion you have it today before. It looks cool. Really? Yeah. Really? I'm yeah. kind of trying to be, like, incognito as well, even though I'm in the country. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's right. good. So, so, hold on. So, my mother, who said she would never be an animal person, she would never have animals. So, like, you see cats, right? There's a cat, right? Yes. Okay, so like, let me give you a little, a little view. Here's like a wind chime. She has a million wind chimes. We have like little uh, properties on the property. The chickens are way out there. There's an orchard way out there. And yeah, I'm sitting on, on a swing and it's like the most serene thing, so. I'm all yours, Devin. Take it away. Well, I hate to ask you this right off the start, but is that uh, the property where they have the armad armad sorry, armadillo issue? Because we don't have yes. armadillos in Canada. I don't even know what they are. Yes. And and it, what's crazy is, and if, my, well, first of all, I kick myself for saying the word armadillo, even though that was true. I mean, that was the honest to God truth. But just thinking about PETA and everybody that's going to bitch and complain about what I'm saying. Like, when you have, like, 17 armadillos ripping up your garden and your world and your everything that you've paid money for, um, you can't, like, you don't have enough um, traps to trap armadillos and then let them go. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm, this is exactly the armadillo place. <laughs> Marley, stop it. We're interviewing here. How big are these armadillos for someone? I've never seen the animals, so I'm just curious, like, are they, would they be frightening to you if, if you saw no, them running? No, no, they're not frightening and they're not life-threatening, but they will ruin, like, if you have a farm, if you have a garden, they will ruin everything you have. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just part of, like, you, you can't, like, you, yeah, you could uh, cage one and let one go, or two or three, but when you have so many out in the country, you can't. It's just too much. So, anyway, yeah. So, that whole situation, that was just a mix-up. You had left the gun in your in your bag, and it was Dude, over an action. Oh, my God. Let me say again. I, I, you know what? I think this is the first like interview in a long while that I've been talking about this and I'm glad you brought it up. Um, so here's the crazy thing. Um, 
I grew up around guns, right? Um, I was always taught gun safety. Um, dude, Marley, stop, please. I beg of you. It's it's Hannibal. Stop. Okay. He, he just said, screw Hannibal. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I I have a bad thing where if I don't sleep one night, then the next night I'm like freaked out, like, oh my God, please let me sleep tonight. And if I don't sleep the second night, God forbid. And if I don't sleep the third night, I'm totally fucked, right? Can, can I say the F word on this show or not? Yeah. Okay. My mom wouldn't let me. Good thing she's inside. Um, anyway, <laughs> so um, is that driving you crazy? I can go like make him shut up. It's How up to you. I don't mind it, but the fans might mind it. I don't know. He stopped you... now. Well, hang on for a second. Um, this is this great Pyrenees that she has protecting her property now. And he's like all that in the bag of chips when it comes to anything and everything around the property. Anyway, so, um, yeah. So, oh, wait, wait, where did I leave off? Um, okay, so three nights, three nights, no sleep, right? And then I realize that the fourth night, I have to wake up at four in the morning to make it to the airport at, at for a flight at seven. Um for Samu, Samu, who was getting a, a kid, a kidney, liver, or kidney transplant, I forget which one. I think it was liver. I think I remember hearing that. Yeah, and so, so my whole thing was like they had used my name. Um, I had donated, like I wasn't charging them, them anything for me to to be there, and um, that was like I was like I never accept morning flights. Like normally, if you book me. I'm afternoon, evening. I hate morning flights, right? And so I'm about to have to go and strangle this dog. Hold up. Marley, Marley, my sweet boy. Can you please stop, my angel? Okay. Why don't we do this? Let's pretend that you're an inside dog. Come on. Come on. Let's pretend you're an inside dog. Yes. That would be so awesome. Look at you. That's so great. Oh, my God. I just made him an inside dog. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So anyway, um, are you still with? Yeah. Oh, it's freezing now, though. Um, Devin, are you still with me? It, it came back. It froze for about five seconds, but we're back now. Okay. So anyway, um, so, like, on the fourth day, it was like I knew that I had to be up at four in the morning. And that was after three nights of not sleeping. And I had just come back from mom's. And I just, I was having insomnia. I couldn't sleep. And so, I, I, anytime I have an early morning flight, I know I don't sleep. So, that was the fourth morning of, like, no sleep. Each night, maybe I got two hours. Like, maybe, maybe, if that. And so I, um, I, I go to the airport and I remember going through TSA and, and saying to myself, like, cause I sleep beautifully on planes. Like I love, I can sleep like before we even take off, I'm asleep, right? Love, love sleeping on planes. Um, I know that's very different people. Some people are scared and whatever, but I just, I guess I've done it long enough. I just love sleep, sleeping anyway. So as I'm standing there um, at TSA, I, all I was thinking to myself was like, holy crap, like, just let me get on the plane and sleep because I'm so exhausted. And so um, I'm at the end of TSA, like after you put your stuff through and you're like on the other side and you're waiting for your stuff to come through and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. I'm exhausted. And I'm thinking like, Jesus, please hurry up. I want to go, you know, sit on the plane and sleep. And um, then I see one person walk up to the monitor and then the second person, third person, fourth person, like eight people are up at the monitor now. And it hit me. All of a sudden I was like, oh, 
holy dear Jesus, I forgot my freaking fracking gun in my carry on. And so I immediately like was like, sir, uh, um, it's in the end of the bag on the, like, I was just telling them exactly where it was and what happened. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was just totally, and, and, you know, it's interesting. I got some flack from like people in the military, which I love, love, love all of my, um, people who have served in the military. And I thank you so much. But like, I remember a couple saying, well, if you are a responsible gun owner, you would have never forgotten that you had the gun in your bag. Well, if you don't sleep for that many days and you get up for a fourth morning, yeah, you might forget that you had that gun in your carry-on bag. I'm sorry. But here's what's interesting. Had the bag been turned sideways, because on one end, I had all my little, um, like, you know, the little shoe things that people cover their feet with, like if they're... Yeah. painting or if you're so I always carry those in one end of my Vera Bradley carry-on bag on the opposite end when I went to my mother's which is here um I had my gun and I, what I called my sock lock because it was a black sock and um it was something where if if I was um like going somewhere and I was scared or whatever I didn't have to wield a gun I just had it with me right anyway um so yeah it was just it was just it was horrible it was horrible it was sad but um charges were dropped thank god and yeah they got the big picture and let me say this um I'm not sure how many times I've said this, in fact, um, the guy that arrested me at the airport, the lady that transported me from the airport to the the jail in Tampa, and the people there at the jail, I ended up writing letters about them because, um, I mean, they didn't treat me great different but they were very fair with me and they realized that I was very new to this process so to speak and um yeah so they they were so amazing and I just I just wrote letters of of thanks to uh, all of their bosses and just said you know how much I appreciated what they did um anyway what are the bridge? But yeah, the thing that sucks too is at this point, if you Google my name, um, the image that comes up, one of the first ones is my damn mugshot. Who would have ever thought I would have a mugshot? Well, once I get this interview out, I hopefully uh, clips of this interview will show up when people search your name too. So hopefully oh. they'll. Uh... There's something a little weird about your sound. Could you just say something again? Because the, the sound was... Yeah. Maybe I need to go inside. Wait, maybe it's it's the fact that I have um, a flipper in my mouth. Can you hear me okay? Uh, it's. I think it's more the, the foam, but it's coming in a little bit more clear now. Oh. So, well, let me go inside and just see what happens, okay? Okay. So let me go inside. Mom, I'm inside. I'm gonna shut your door, babe. Oh, I'm doing an interview. I love you. Is that the house that you grew up in? No, no. This interestingly, you asked me this. Um, this is a 100 year old house. At this point, it's like 120 years old. Um. And my mom um, bought it and had it moved to her 60 acres. And um, I remember saying to her, I'm like, Mom, I love you with all my heart, but I will never spend one night in that shack. Because honestly, this was a, it's what they call 
little a Florida cracker house. Okay, all everyone, black people, white people, it's called a cracker house. Um, anyway, um, she bought it, had it moved here, but it was like, like there were like holes in the floors and like all this craziness, right? And I said to her, I said, Mom, I love you, but I will never spend one night here in this shack. And then she renovated it, and my sister did the decorating, and like people stop by all the time to take pictures, knock on the door. Like they've had so many videos taken here. Um, it's like just a very calm, serene. We we call it the old house. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's the old house, and um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm just going to hang up and call you right back to see if it's the connection. Because it is better in there, but it's still a little weird. Okay. Okay, so to get into your wrestling... Let me me ask you this. Are we able to save the other stuff or no? Uh, I'm able to save it. It won't be the highest quality, but I mean, it's okay. I I can use it, but the audio won't be that great. Use it, use it and say that. Use it and say in the beginning that, if you don't mind, yeah. if you don't mind. No, right, well, this, ahead. that wasn't about your wrestling career anyways, so people really want to know about your wrestling career. So I guess before you got into WCW, you started off working for Turner as a makeup artist. Obviously, you know a thing or two about makeup. A thing or two. Um, yeah, so... Have you ever heard the story of how I even got into the world of TV or wrestling? No. no I... never... Okay, I've told it a million times or what feels like a million times to me. So sometimes I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over and over again. But then I realize people have never heard it before. So here we go again. Um, so I'm going to go back to where it all started. Um I was 13 years old. I lived in a teeny tiny town in Florida. And um, my best friend across the neighborhood, like across the park, um, her mom owned a fashion store and a Merle Norman cosmetic mm, company, right? They were they were all in the same building. And um, the funny thing was... <laughs> that I was such a little, like, I don't know why, but like when I was five years old, I was sent to the hospital because I had put my grandmother's lip gloss in my eye. And like, I I don't know why I was just like a makeup addict. Right. And so, um, then fast forward and my bestie, her mom owns a damn fashion store with clothes and makeup. So, Literally, I worked there not for money, but for makeup and clothes. So basically, I earned my clothing and my makeup. And um, fast forward from there, um, you know, in my my teeny tiny town, I remember not very much from my high school at all even though there were wonderful people there, like in my brain, it was just like, let me get out of here. Like, were you a cheerleader? Yes, I was. Why? Okay. You look like you probably would have been one. So I was just wondering. And I was a cheerleader in our um, middle school, not our high school. I was the captain of the cheerleaders in our middle school. Um, Anyway, um, So, like, the minute I graduated, I was, like, boom, gone. Like, gone. And um, I remember, like, I I went to this fashion college, right? It was called Balder Fashion College. And um, it was a two-year program. And after the first year, my father refused to pay for me anymore. He said, you know, if you want to keep going, your mom will have to pay for you. And so... I knew my mom was struggling and there's no way I was going to ask my mom to, you know, fork that out. And so I just came home and I started working for the local newspaper doing ad layups and I was miserable. Like I was just like 
I can't be in this tiny town. I, I'm, I, this is not where I'm supposed to be. And so I remember calling my, um, one of my instructors, um, professors from Barter Fashion College and saying like, I got to get out of here. Like, what can I do? And she's like, well, I know my hairdresser, he needs like, um, someone to shampoo heads and sweep the floors and fold towels and answer the phones. You know, do you mind to do that? I'm like, dude, I'm there. I'm there. I'm like, I'll do anything to get out of here. So I went there. It was William Salon in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was a very posh shishi salon at the time. I have no idea what's going on with it now. I don't even know if it's still happening. Um, but yeah, my job was basically the menial tasks was what I had to do. And so one day I remember shampooing the head of one of the anchors for CNN. And this is when CNN was like chicken noodle news, brand spanking new. Like people were like, who wants to watch news 24 hours a day? Nobody. Well, turns out we all do. Right. Anyway. So, um, I asked the girl as I'm, as I'm shampooing her hair, I'm like, um, who's in charge of makeup at CNN? And she told me the name of the person, which was Ramona Horton. And I called this woman incessantly. Like I called her every day. And finally, I think it was like day 25, day 28. She's like, ah, uh, okay, come in. I'll give you an interview. So I went in and she literally said to me, hi, this is Patrick Greenlaw. He's an anchor. He's about to go on live, do his makeup. And so I was like, yeah, I didn't even like pause for two seconds. I was like, mm, I got it, girl. Did it. He went on. She said, you're hired. And that was the beginning of my makeup career in television. And then because I was the low man on the totem pole, Devin, um, it was like I had to be there on the weekends and on the weekends is when Jim Crockett flew his boys in to do their tapings for NWA. So I was the makeup girl and, um, yeah, so I, let me shut up and let you ask another question because I've carried on. Go ahead. So I understand uh, before Dustin, you actually dated Brian Pillman for a bit. Did you meet him while doing makeup or was that by, were you already managing by the time you met Brian? Um, it was kind of almost simultaneously, but um, I was doing both. So at a certain point, Tony Shabani came to me. We had lunch together and he's like, Tear, um, they want to make you this character. Are you interested or not? And I was like, dude, talk to me. And um, I had nothing to do with the character at all, except for the name. I came up with the name Alexandra York. Like that was the only claim I have to that character. Um, but it was kind of like the thing with Brian that all happened kind of simultaneously. And if I'm wrong, because I have a horrible memory, someone please correct me. But um, yeah, so Brian and I dated. and. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about Brian and I, talk to me or let me yeah, shut is up. There, is there anything about Brian that, that would surprise us to know a side of him that, that you saw? I know you knew him for more than just the time you date him. You were around him many, many years. Yeah. Um, he was, I shouldn't say one of, he was the most intense person I ever knew in the business. He was so intense. Um, and I don't know how graphic you want me to be. I, I don't mind being graphic. Like I sure be I've graphic. Sort of, I'm sorry. You can be graphic. Okay. So I've spoken honestly about this because, I, you know, to this day, I love and care for him. Um, and I love and care for his children. Um, but I, so he and I were dating and, um, he came to me one day and said um, that his ex-girlfriend is pregnant. And I said, you know, dude, 
because we had just started dating like maybe a couple of months, no, no big deal. And, um, I said, dude, like, it, that's okay. Just you go do what you need to do, be a dad, be a husband, whatever. Like, we'll always be friends. Like, that's cool. And I thought everything was cool. And, um, like, he started getting very, very, um, like, he would watch me and anything. I Like, if I, if I talked to someone for too long, he was like, he would say things to me but the worst thing that happened was I don't remember where it was in Alabama I, I think it might have been Montgomery I don't know it was in Alabama though I do remember that and this was during the era of oh god I need I almost need to go back Devin because unless you know about this drug you, th- this will make no sense, but, um, d- do you remember gamma hydroxybutyrate? Yeah, it was very popular for what a decade or so among yeah. wrestlers. Yeah. But, 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 but the, the you know, interesting thing was it was available. Like I bought mine at Lex and Singh's gym. Right. It was a health for, it was considered health. Yeah, like it came out and the, the the big thing that everyone talked about was it'll help you lose body fat and it will help you sleep. Well, shit, I had to be at CNN at four in the morning. I could never get to sleep early enough to get enough sleep to wake up and feel rested. So I was like, lose body fat, be, sleep. Hell yeah, that that's I'm all about it. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but the, the interesting thing was you could buy it right there at St. Alexis gym. And that's what I did. It was not like black market or, you know, like, no, it was legal and you, you bought it at the gym and it was great. Right. Anyway. So, um, fast forward again and we're in Alabama and, um, Tom Zink, rest in peace, um, was in my room sitting in a chair um it was a room where there's a bed and like a living room set up and he was sitting in a chair and um all of a sudden this bam 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 on the door happens and it's brian screaming and um you know he's like i don't want to say everything you said because i love his children and i just yeah, we won't say all the things he said. Anyway, he ended up knocking down the hotel room door, accusing Tom Zink, which was his best friend at the time, of screwing me. Meanwhile, Tom's sitting in a chair. I'm over here on a bed sitting there. We're like nowhere near each other. And... um yeah, it was it was brutal. It was nasty. It was ugly. And then he started leaving messages on my voicemail, which back in the day, like now there's no little tiny recorders that fit into a little audio thing. I don't know how old you are, Devin, but um, like back in the day, you know, we yeah, had. I remember those. Right. And he started leaving me these nasty messages. Um it got so bad because I couldn't sleep again. And if I did sleep, then I was wakened by like him leaving a message. And so finally it was like WCW had to intervene at a certain point. But um, anyway, um, but fast forward, like I I still love him. I respect him. I hate that he's gone. I love his kids. And um, I just think that, and this is one thing he said to me, he said, I thought you were going to wait for me. I'm like, dude, like I told you, like you, you had a baby coming. You had an ex-girlfriend that you were having a baby with. Like, we'll be friends. What part of I'm going to wait for you had anything to do with that? And so, yeah, it was kind of um, disconcerting. But, um, yeah, finally he got over it. When, when he finally came to, uh, to WWF. Um, we had, you know, and we did the whole, like he 
kidnapped me and he had me for 30 days and all that stuff. We had so much fun filming those, those vignettes. <laughs> like they were crazy and silly and we laughed and we had a good time. And I'm, I'm happy that those were our last memories together. So. Were you surprised that he passed or could you see kind of the downward spiral happening? I knew back in WCW that he was not well, right? And then when he came up to WWF um, and I was working with him, you know, I, I knew shit was not all straight. But I remember the night before he passed, um, in my contract, because of Dakota, I did not do house shows. I only did pay-per-views and TVs so that I was home with her, you know, for the majority of time. And there were a few occasions where the company would ask me, will you come on the road and will you, you know, do these house shows? And I would acquiesce and say yes. And, you know, I, I was a team player, right? And so the night before he passed, I remember, um, because again, he was, he owned me and I was dressed in all the black and the nose ring and the whatever. Right. And he was so rough with me that night. Um, like he scratched my neck and, and he was just really rough with me. And, and I said to him, after we got backstage, I said, are you okay? And he said, he was like totally pissed off. He was like, yeah, nobody will let me ride with them. So I went to Dustin and I said, you know, can we let him ride with us? You know, because nobody will let him. And Dustin said, no, he'll find somebody. Somebody will let him ride with them. Yeah, it's okay. So I, you know, pissed it off and like, okay, somebody will let him ride with them, right? And the next day was our pay-per-view where um, Dustin and I were supposed to, uh, um, what's it called when you do your vows again? Not reunite, but help me. Uh, I don't remember, but yeah. When when you come together after you've been married and you, not reunite. Is it reunite your vows? No. No. Uh, I have never done it, so I don't know, but... Uh... I know what you're talking about. People do it all the time. Any hoodle doodles. So um, we're supposed to do that whole scene on the pay-per-view October 5th. And um, it's my birthday that day. So I was a little bit preoccupied because of my birthday too, right? So it's pay-per-view, my birthday. It's a big show, big pay-per-view. What we're going to do with Brian, I'm going to turn and go heel with Brian and Dustin's going to turn baby face. Right. And, um, it's like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Brian's not there. And we had to be at the building. Um, if you were doing, uh, an Eastern standard time pay-per-view or show, you had to be there at 1 PM. If you backed up the hours, you know, backward, you had to be at, there are two, whatever, right? Or um, I'm sorry, not two, um, 12, uh, 11, 10, whatever, yeah. right? Anyway, um, I'm like, Brian's not here, Dust. And he's like, oh, he'll be here. He'll be here soon. And so I remember I finally went, I think it was, I think it was Earl Hebner. I told, I'm like, Brian's not here, dude. He's not here and something's wrong. And, um, Somebody ended up calling the hotel and yeah, they, they found him dead. And, um, uh, you know, I always wondered if like, if Dustin and I would have let him ride with us and, you know, uplifted him in some way, would, would things have been different? And I know people that experience death like that often question themselves, but I, I still do. I still wonder because I'm one of those people where, I love to lift, laud, and love someone. And, um, yeah, I just I just would have never had him go to his hotel room distraught and, and that upset. So. so after you dated Brian and had that kind of bad experience, were you hesitant to, to date Dustin when he started 
making advances at you? He didn't make advances at me. Um, um, so, dude, how much time do we have? Like, as I much as you want. I haven't told these stories. Oh my god. Um, so I remember, like, I was in the business before Dustin ever was in the business, right? Um, I love it when people tell me that I got my career on the back of my ex-husband. Uh, no, he wasn't even in the business when I was in the business. So um, uh, no disrespect to him, but just speaking facts. Um, anyway, we had a pay-per-view out in Phoenix and um, I can't tell you the previous relationship to this right now, one day ask me about this and I'll give you the scoop. How's that? Sure. Okay. Down but, the road. But there was, there was a relationship that still to this day is deep in my heart. And um, anyway. Um, a WCW so, guy, could you say that? Or is it someone from another company? Many companies. Okay. But just still deep in my heart, love, 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 and respect. Okay? Anyway, one day we'll talk about it. Um, so, anyway, we had a pay-per-view out in Phoenix, um, WCW pay-per-view. And um, I remember I was on, it was a Phoenix Hilton. And this, they had this beautiful, like, mountain, um, like, sunset behind the hotel. And Janie Engel, Dusty, myself, and I forget who else was sitting there on the patio with this beautiful backdrop. But we were sitting there having drinks at the outdoor, like, bar. And um, it was getting close to sunset. And all of a sudden, Dustin pulled up in a cab and literally like he got out of the cab and it was, it was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like, like all this fairy dust fell down. And I was like, what the hell? Cause I have looked at this kid like a jackass because he pulled into town not too long ago. And he was like a hot mess. And why am I even thinking anything about this kid, right? And um, so anyway, he comes to the patio, has a drink. Um, we all go and have dinner. We're in like this big like um, uh, van that's like a million seater. <laughs> like It's like a hokey van, right? And we go to dinner. And then when we come back to the hotel... Um, Dustin said to me, he's like, all right, I'm going to go and hang with the boys. And I'm like, dude, you're not going anywhere. You're going to hang with me. And so he hung with me at the hotel. Uh, don't ask me why I spoke to him like that. Like, what the hell? Um, anyway, it was the first time I ever had tequila in my entire life. The last time I had tequila in my entire life. Um, I remember him getting me up to my room because I was like, not well, you know, I, I that one shot of tequila was like, Whoa. and, um, he, God bless him. He didn't do anything. He literally tucked me into bed and went to his room the next morning. I could not find my toothbrush and toothpaste. I called him. I'm like, dude, do you have toothbrush and toothpaste? He brought it to me. And, we flew home from Phoenix and he sent up this letter, this little tiny note that said, um, will you go out on a date with me? And I sent back, yes, but you have to call me. Like, I don't know why I was being such a bitch. <laughs> like what? His letter wasn't good enough to invite me <laughs> for, <coughs> sorry. for like a lunch. No, I, I said to him, like, you have to call me. So the next day he calls me and we went out to lunch. And then he said, you know, would you go out to dinner with me tonight? And I said, yes, we went to dinner the next day, lunch, dinner. And then he just moved into my apartment. Um, yeah. So we were just never apart after that. 
Um, so yeah, that's how that happened. When you were working with him against the Ultimate Warrior, how was the Ultimate Warrior in those days? Kind of pissy. You know, I love Dana. Um, I love her girls. And I know she has gone through a lot, um, you know, just experiencing everything she did. But, um, yeah, he was not real thrilled with what we were doing. Dana said to me that uh, I think she was on one of my podcasts and she said, no, like he loved you and whatever. But I just got the connotation that he was not real thrilled with what he was doing with us. I think I think that the whole gold dust thing was so new and the whole, you know, gay uh, innuendo was so new. He was just not certain of that. I see. How do you, what did you think of the whole gold dust and Marlena situation because it was much different than Alexandra York? Yeah. Yeah. So so Vince came up with the whole gold dust thing, right? Uh, I had nothing to do with that. And Vince called and, um, interestingly enough, Devin, I just found a, a briefcase of mine. If I go down this rabbit hole and forget where I started, keep me on the path that you just asked me, please. Um, so at one of my mom's homes, I just found one of my briefcases and I found all these letters and notes and this and that. And, um, there were some from Linda and Vince, you know, on letterhead, on um, stationery. And um, there was one from Jim Ross telling Dustin how great he was going to be as gold dust. And what's, what's the most heartwarming is I found letters from Pops um, to Dustin. And this is during the time that he and Dustin weren't speaking. Um like apologizing to Dustin, grandma apologizing to Dustin. Um, oh gosh, my battery power says I'm 15%. Don't let me die out, please. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, I remember when it all happened because Dustin had been fired from WCW literally for listening to his agent, right? Mike Graham telling him to, you know, juice to, to freaking blade yeah. and, and get that truck match. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you, especially because they were out, they were not in the studio. They were way out in the freaking middle of nowhere. And you, you knew to do whatever your agent told you to do. Like that's what you did. And so both guys did the same thing and they fired both guys. And, um, you know, I remember it just being so devastating to us because we had a baby and, um, God, this is so sad to tell you. I remember going to Kroger in Atlanta and writing a check for our food and knowing we did not have money to cover it and calling my mom saying, can you please help us? Like that's how bad it was. Right. And then, um, you know, it was not too long after that, that Vince gave him this idea and to Dustin's credit, like he went from being a tobacco chewing Texan, right. Ass kicking Texan to being this dude that is totally androgynous and totally like, piss you off, make you mad, make you glad, like just something no one had ever seen before. Adrian Adonis back in the day, but Dustin took it farther, right? And um, Dan, I'm going to show you this really fast because I just found this in the stack of stuff in my briefcase. Sure. Um, you might want to get your cell phone plug while you're up too, just in case. Idea. idea. I had gone to my sister's home and she had a collection of Barbie dolls. And one of the Barbie dolls she had was this one. Oh, cool. And, and that is the Bob Mackie sun goddess Barbie doll, right? Bob Mackie was very famous for dressing Cher and Carol Burnett and a lot of people um, he had so many famous uh, dresses that, that Cher wore where it looked like it was showing her body, but it really wasn't like he was like on the cutting edge. Right. 
And so I was laying in our tanning bed at home and all of a sudden it hit me. Dakota's like a year and a half. I'm, I've been like not doing wrestling for like almost two years. And it was like, all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, what does the WWE not have actually WWF at the time? Sorry. Um, what do they not have? And at the time they had Sherry, scary Sherry and Sonny. And so, you know how, uh, they were very different human beings in terms of their characters, right? So I was like, there's no old school Hollywood. And Dustin's supposed to be this like perfect actor and whatever. Like, you know, he quotes all these movies and whatever. So all of a sudden it just hit me in the tanning bed. I was like, oh my God, like they need this female in the company like that's what they need and so I I called Dustin while I was in the tanning bed and I told him all like my entire idea and he's like I love it um and I said okay you know call Vince and just like tell him and he's like I'm not calling Vince you call Vince and at the time Dustin was very scared of authority and I hope that he's at the point in in his life now that he can admit that back in the day um but he was like, no, you call Vince. I'm not calling Vince. And so um, I did, you know, I called the office and um, I remember getting a phone call back from Pat Patterson and um, Pat gave me the obligatory, oh, you know, that's great. That's a great idea. Thank you so much, but we're not interested. Um, but thanks anyway. So I literally cast it aside, didn't think another thing of it, focused on being a mommy. And um, I was at my grandparents' house, and it was right at Christmas time. And Dustin said, he called, and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm at Grand and Granny's. And he said, well, pack your bags. They want to do your idea. And I was like, you're kidding. So, like, everything about Marlena was me. Um... I had the idea to go to the ring with either a cigar or a glass of wine. And at the time, because cigars were allowed, it, it, at least in not that people could walk in and smoke cigars in, it, you know, in the seats, but for us, we could walk out and whatever we used for our characters was allowed. And, um, we decided to go with the cigars and, um, yeah, cause Back in the day, I absolutely love bubble baths and cigars. So it was to me, it was like, let me do this extension of myself with this character. And um, the reason I came up with and decided on Marlena was because of Marlena Dietrich, who was way back in the day in Hollywood. And she was one of the first women that wore pants and wore pants suits and smoked cigars and I was like, dude, you are all that me. I love you. I, I cherish you. Yeah, let's go with Marlena. Anyway, um, so yeah, and and that's how Marlena was created. So was that the question? That was not yes, the question. Yes, that was actually the question. It was? How, uh, how you came up with that compared to, you mentioned before, not to go back too much, but Alexandra York, that was actually... One of my favorite characters of you. I was a big WCW fan at that time. Did you have much say in that character, or was that uh, oh. Dusty or someone? No, um, I really don't. I think it was Oli and Tony. Tony Schiavone could answer that better than me. Um, I remember, like, he loves Tony... you, by the way. Apparently, I'm sure you know this, but I'm sorry. The f- the fans wanted me to tell you that Tony Schiavone uh, is a huge fan of yours. I love him right back. I love him right back. Um, He took me to lunch and he, and he posed this whole Alexander York thing without the name, right? Just telling me the ideas of the character and asking me if I wanted to to do it. And I was like, I talked to me about money because at the time I was waking up at a ridiculous hour of the morning, being at CNN. Um, I had already gone to um, Washington and been makeup artist for Larry King. And um, it was just like, it was a grind. It was hard. And so with the, the money that they offered, I was like, okay, 
yes, I'll, I'll do this. So I was makeup artist and Alexander York, but, um, it, it ended up, and I swear to you, like I need to do a thing with Tony again, where I ask him all these little minute details, because, um, I know that I picked out my name. I came up with, I wrote down all these names. Um, I knew that she was a heel. I knew that she was a snotty bitch. And so I was trying to write down all these names that I thought was sounding like a snotty bitch, right? Your and outfits Alex, were very nice in that day too, by the way. Alexandra York sounded very bitchy and high horse and like screw like she just was ugly and nasty. So that's I, the only thing I had to do with that character was the name. That's it. And for a while in WWE, you managed Meat, who I think got fired for some weird reason. Do you have any insight into the the reason why he was released? I heard it was like he was secretly what? taping wrestlers or something. Who 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 got fired? Sean Stasiak. Oh, um. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I was kind of like just putting one foot in front of the, the other at that point. Like, I didn't yeah. really like the PMS gimmick at all. I hated the name. Like, yeah. I thought that was like the most horrible name ever. It pissed me off. I gave Vince so many other names that he did not choose. It pissed me off. And, um, yeah, I just remember, like, he was just odd and strange and i just i i would think i was very removed from that that time with him to be honest mm -hmm. I, I just i don't remember a whole lot about bex i mean i remember everyone being pissed off at him but i don't remember having a real role or having a relationship with him and what was your relationship like with Sonny backstage? Was there any uh, issues? Um, back in the day, oh my god, uh, is she out yet? Is she is she good? I think she just got out about a month ago. Well, praise Jesus. Good for you, Tammy. Um, so she reminded me. And I've said this before in so many interviews. She reminded me very much of a young Missy Hyatt. And they were both like little children that needed coddling and love and affection and this and that. And um, I just remember uh, um, kind of not taking her under my wing, but treating her like a sweet child. And um, she, I think she said before, you know, it's like, if, if Marlena told me to do something, I did it and whatever. But um, you know, I just think she's like a broken soul and she needs love. And that's the same thing for Missy. And, you know, I think, but here's the thing. Let me say this to you. If we all look at our lives, we all have something that has broken our soul. Whether it's a family member, a relationship, a business relationship, a career, whatever. So none of us are above and beyond that being that broken soul, right? So, you know, I don't say it in when I say that about Tammy, I don't say it like, you know, I shit on her at all. I say it as um, I feel sorry for her. I do. I feel sorry for her and I want her to be whole in her soul. Okay. Be whole in her soul. That's what I would like for her to do. I feel sorry for her too, but I hope she stops driving drunk because she'll eventually kill somebody. I think if she keeps that yeah. up. Yeah. Now for Cody, there were some fans that wanted me to ask you what your relationship is like with Cody. <laughs> um, it's funny. I can think of, in fact, I just went through a card from either Pops or Grandma that was talking about Cody and Teal. Um, I found all these just like literally, I just found all these. It's so amazing. Anyway, um, <laughs> one of my last memories of Cody as a child was Dustin and I were over at Pops and Grandma. And when I see Pops and Grandma, 
Pops is Dusty. Grandma is Michelle, right? Teal is the oldest daughter of Pops and Grandma. Um, half brother, half sister to Dustin. Dustin's whole sister is Kristen, um, whose mom is what we call Grandmommy. Um, and and that is, you know, there was Dustin and Kristen first and then a uh, Teal and Cody. So those are the four siblings, right? Two whole siblings, two half siblings. But I, what I love about them is they don't consider each other halves or whatever. Anyway, um, I remember being like, I was such a germaphobe about my kid, right? And we were at Pops and Grandma's, and it's like, Pops, Grandma, Dustin, me, Teal, Cody. And Cody was playing with Dakota. Dakota's like not even a year old, right? And he's putting her, his fingers in her mouth. And I'm just like, uh, no. And it pissed Dusty off. It pissed him off so badly that I, that I was like, Cody, take your hands out of her mouth. <laughs> like, that's not clean. And she's a baby. And, yeah, it was like, it, yeah. Yeah. And we ended up going, like, Dustin got pissed off. We ended up going home early. It was crazy. Um, but let me say this about Cody. Um, like, I am so freaking proud of what he's done. I was so scared, like, when he left and and what he and, and um, Brandy said, I was like, holy shit, y'all are burning bridges. Oh, my gosh. But then they've done such an amazing job. So I'm just, I'm thrilled with them. I'm happy and I'm thankful that, that they've like it, it to, to me, this is the very first time uh, that WWE is shaking in their boots. Like they're going like, we, we should do what they're doing or what are we not doing? And yeah. And I'm very proud of them for that. I'm very proud of Dustin for being in that. I think Dustin is in the best shape of his life. And um, I'm just proud of him for that. I'm proud of Cody and Brandy and everyone that's involved in it. And uh, yeah, I give them massive kudos. Are we going to see Dakota in AEW anytime soon? You know, she's been there for many shows, but behind the scenes working. So I don't know. She's done a, she's done a couple of shows with me for um Overdrive Pro Wrestling um with with Tommy Dreamer and Robbie E. If you guys haven't seen it, go search it out, find it. It's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, she she's enough of a drama hound that she could be in front of the camera, but she she went to college to be behind the camera. So I think that's probably one of the ways that she'll end up being in the business is behind the camera. And you don't have to go into too much detail or talk about it if you don't want to, but everybody, because I guess of the dark side of the ring episode that just came out, wanted me to No, Okay. Now you mentioned you have a podcast. No, I do have a podcast, but it, okay. it's transferred into a live stream, which I love. It, it, I say I love, sometimes I end up getting busy, especially with me being on the farm with mom and like being the farm girl. Um, and I don't have time to put on makeup, do hair, whatever. So I'm like over here, like albino freaking freak. Um, but I love that I get to connect with my fans. So it is, um, we just went from D live to Twitch. So it is um, twitch.tv forward slash the Terry Runnels. And um, yeah, I like, I love it. If you call yourself a Terry Runnels fan and you're not a part of my damn live stream, you're full of shit. Hold on. I have, I have to open my uh, diet A&W root beer, which is my favorite drink in the whole world. Hold on. If you don't have, I know it's not good for you probably, but anyway. Well, you seem to still be in shape. Uh, what are you doing to, to stay in shape these days with this lockdown? Um, I am a farm girl. Um, it's sad. There is a, a gym that's 24 hours that I was able to go to until all this crap happened, right? 
And it's funny. I just uh, I called the owner of the gym today and I was like, dude, you know, checking on you. How are, how's business? How are you doing? I know you, you can't have people in there, but the thing I love about it is that because I am here taking care of my mom um, and because this gym is close by and it's 24 seven, I can go at two in the morning and nobody's there and because I hate training around people. Um, so (laughs) yeah, I've always hated it. Like, like literally in my entire career, I trained at home. I never trained at a gym ever, ever, ever. Um, when I would get to TVs, I would go up to the top of the, uh, of the arena and run and run and run until the doors open. And then I would go back to my dressing room. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't like to train around people. I, I feel like they're looking at me and it's like, I, I need to focus on what I'm doing. So I just, I really don't like, you know, being a part of that. So anyway. Now I've heard you already tell the story about Dustin on the plane ride from hell, but the story I wanted to know about the plane ride from hell is were you paying attention to the Brock Lesnar, Mr. Perfect altercation that happened on there? Yes and no. Yes and no. It was kind of like um, everyone that was, and, and understand this was a, you know, a chartered flight. So there was really no first class, you know, there we were all one, right? But I was sitting in first class and as was Vince, as was, you know, a lot of the office. And when a lot of this stuff went down, Paul Heyman, one of the best things he ever did for me, he looked at, well, this is when Dustin was singing that damn David Allen Coe song to me, which he had sang to me, like before we married, during our marriage, whatever. And now he's married to another girl, which I loved. I thought she was wonderful. She was a great stepmom to Dakota. And this jerk is singing me this damn song and i remember like looking back because i knew where it was coming from all the all the trouble was in the back of the plane right and when i glanced back i caught paul's eye and he was like k fabe come like k fucking fabe and so I just went, lay, laid my head against the window again and went back to sleep. And yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm glad you made it through that without uh, too crazy. much craziness. Crazy. So were you? I guess that means you were uh, apart from Dustin by the time he went back to WCW. Um. Yes. Yes. Um. And you know, it pisses me off. Um. Dustin had gone through rehab several times and like at my behest, because I was like, choose drugs or your family. Right. And, um, I remember when he went to rehab, it's like, he's with, uh, um, Terrell he's married to now. They were dating and I remember he came to my house and he was um, you know, he, for the first time ever, he told me like what he had been taking and drinking and doing. And I was just shocked because I was this stupid wife that didn't realize what all he was doing. Um, but, um, so I, I remember, and I, I'm down a rabbit hole already. So bring me back in a minute to what the question you asked. Anyway, um, I remember, you know, telling Dakota, like what he was doing that he was going to rehab and she's like, no. Mm -mm. I don't want to see him. He's just, he's just going to get out and do the same thing. And, um, he didn't. And I said to her, I'm like, I'm like pumpkin. If you do not go and see your father before he goes in to rehab, you, you will never forget, forgive yourself. If something bad happens to him, like give him all your, your support and everything. Like, don't do this. Right. Anyway. She talked to him. She was there. She was present and um, never gone back. He's never gone back. And um, I have to say about him in the future, but I'm proud of him that he, he's just 
he's remained healthy and like he's the healthiest he's been and his new addiction i've said this for many years now is the gym like that's his addiction is the gym and what a great addiction to have right so anyway and for sable how was she to get along with in those days um i never had respect for her because of the the way that she she would put herself on the road, like, uh, for instance, when, when I went and, and signed my contract with Vince, um, I said to him, my words verbatim, um, I'm a mom first, I'm a wife second, and I will bust my ass for you third, but that's the hierarchy. And, um, I will not do house shows. So I only did TVs and pay-per-views because of my child. Right. And I will never forget when Rena finally came into the business um, and she had been on the road with Mark for like some God awful, like 18 days, 11, 12 days, like something like you just would never leave your kid for that long. Right. And um, I remember saying to her, I'm like, like, Rena, how can you leave Mariah like that? And she's like, well, because Mark needs me. I'm like, well, Mark's an adult. Mariah's a kid. What does Mark need you to do? And she said to me, she goes, well, I make his uh, meals um, and I, I, you know, get him to the gym. And I'm thinking like, are you freaking smoking crack? Actually, I was not thinking those exact words back then, but I was just thinking like, what a bad mom you are. So I never had respect for her. And I remember hearing that she had said, and this is after she had sued the company, um, she called and said, I'll do whatever it takes to get back in the business. And, you know, she's just one of those um, people, I I believe, um, that puts herself above every other person. And um, as a mom, I just don't have respect for that. And I know you did an interview with Vince Russo. What are your thoughts on him? I know you worked with him in WWE. It's a love hate. Like sometimes I'm like so aggravated at like what he says and does and some of the crap he wanted me to do. And then other times I'm like, he was a genius. He was like, he is solely behind Goldust in everything Goldust said and I shouldn't say solely because, you know, everything had to go through Vince back in the day. But um, Vince Russo was the writer for Goldust. So, you know, I I give him massive credit for a lot. So, And Rick Bassman wanted me to ask you, when are you coming to visit him in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Rick Bassman? Yeah. I should come sooner rather than later. Oh my gosh. You and your puppy dogs. I should come see you soon. Um, I think my dog wanted to come see you. She jumped in here to, to say what's hello. Her what's her name? Piper. Piper. Hello, Piper. <laughs> oh, now mom's dog is like like making noise in here. Piper. Oh. <laughs> she um, pooped. Hi, Piper. Piper? She, she doesn't good, usually what? come up for interviews, but uh, maybe she heard the female's voice. You're a good girl, Piper. You're a pretty girl. Is she all poodle or no? Yeah, she's pure poodle. Oh, I've always had pure, purebred poodles until my little Mozart, which I had for 16 years, who's buried right out to the left of me on my mom's farm. Um. But yeah, if you like, he flew everywhere with me, and I carry him like I took the stroller everywhere with us. And um, I haven't been able to open my heart yet to have another animal. I just can't do it yet. And last question: uh, the fans want me to ask you. I'm going to guess it might be Brandy, but if there's any female wrestler or manager that you watch today and think is really good. Manager, um, okay, this sucks for me to say, but I need to be honest. Um, I don't watch the product a lot. Like, if Dakota says to me, Dad's doing this, or you know, this is going to happen, and it's like noteworthy, I will watch whatever he's doing. 
but I really don't watch anymore. It's hard for me to watch. And so I can't answer that question. I really can't in, in all honesty. Um, before you leave me though, I have to tell you, I don't know if people can realize or say, uh, hear that I sound differently. Um, Martin Duggan is sending me love right now. <laughs> it's so funny today. He's like, interview, 5 p.m. Interview, you good? You good? You good? Yeah, I'm good, Martin. Anyway, um, so just recently, I, like I have veneers on my front teeth, right? And I was chewing nothing hard. I was not like biting anything, nothing, nothing. And I'm chewing food in the back of my mouth, like soft food. And all of a sudden I feel this hard thing. And it's a freaking, it's my freaking fracking front tooth, like right here. Right. Wow. And so I'm in this teeny tiny town. I go to this teeny tiny town's dentist, which I love her. She's amazing. But she's like, Terry, like you could not have done this in a worse way because like you didn't just lose your veneer. You lost your freaking tooth with your veneer and because everything shut down, no labs are working right now. So literally, uh, Devin, I had to exist on my live stream wearing masks because I had no front tooth. And I finally got, do you know what a flipper is? No, I don't. Well, well, guess what? You're about to know. So, you know what those God awful shows are like toddlers and tiaras and that kind of crap, right? Where yeah. they dress kids. Okay. So when these kids lose their teeth in the front, bottom, whatever, so that they don't look like snaggle tooth little winches, they make these dental, they call them flippers. Uh, Jerry Saganowicz has one. Mick Foley has one where it's like they can have their tooth in, they can have the tooth out, whatever, right? So she said to me, she's like, the best I can do for you is to get you a flipper until you are able to get an implant in that tooth, which sounds so painful and I'm still scared. I know I have to do it, but it scares the hell out of me. Anyway, um, so... I just got my flipper recently and just showed it to my fans on my live stream recently. But do you want to see it? Sure. I don't really, really want to show you, but I'm gonna, cause I want to, <laughs> I'm trying to be brave. That's where I'm trying to be. Okay, okay. Hold on. All right. Hold on. I'm not going to show you the hole. I'm just going to, I'm going to pull it out and show you what a flipper looks like and what my little tooth looks like. Sure. All right. That's Oh my God. Am I really? Oh, what in the hell? Wow. I am now McFoley and Sachs. <laughs> you didn't want to get a gold tooth instead? Oh, no, no, no gold teeth for me. But like, it's just so gross and weird. And like, I don't know. I play with it all the time. It's just weird. It's just so weird. But yeah, that will, once all this COVID-19 crapola is done, um, I'll get it replaced with a proper dental augment. And yeah. There was a fan that wanted me to ask you if you're remarried or dating now, or if you're still single. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Here's what's crazy. So I didn't date for five years, right? Didn't date, didn't, and when I say I didn't date, I didn't so much as like have a phone dalliance with anyone. Like I, it was just, I was like, I, I'm just going to focus on me, my health, my happiness, my child, my family, that's it. And then, um, <laughs> weirdly enough at a family wedding in New York, I ended up very weirdly meeting someone that is not on social media, has nothing to do with like, had no idea who I was whatsoever. Um, and he's 31 and this buff, like badass, but I remember standing at the wedding and at the wedding, um, the the bride, which I was on the bride side, the bride had lost her sister to a car wreck. And 
um, he was on the groom side and the groom had lost his dad and his brother. So as they were doing the father daughter dance, everyone on the bride side is crying. Right. And then when they did the mother son dance, everyone on the groom side is like bawling because of, you know, the passing of, of family members. Anyway, I look across the, the, the room and here's this big dude and he's just pouring like crying. And I thought to myself, like, wow, if you can be a big badass like that and cry openly, like kudos to you, but I didn't think a thing of it. Right. And it, people were asking to get pictures with me and mom had asked me to go into the dessert room to bring her some dessert. So I was walking in there and this one lady said, Oh, can I get a picture with you? And lo and behold, this, that guy was walking by. She's like, sir, do you want to take a picture? Like totally out of the blue. Right. And then he takes the picture and I start to walk away and he's like, where are you going? I want to talk to you. And I'm like, dude, I'm here with my mom. She's old. I'm going to the table where she's at. And I was an ass, to be honest with you. I was not very nice. And he's like, well, do you mind if I follow you? <laughs> I'm like, you're a grown man. If you've got legs, knock yourself out. Not nice, right? Anyway, long story short. He got my, he said, can I take you out to dinner? I'm like, dude, I don't live here. I, I'm, I live in Florida. This is New York. And um, he's like, can I have your phone number? Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, fast forward. Um, and my mother fell in love with him, which is crazy. Him being that age. And then another guy, 28. And then another guy, like 29. It's like, What? Like the last thing I wanted was to date someone young. I said to myself, when I date again, I will date an older gentleman that has lived, has been around the world. Instead of me educating someone, I'll be educated by that person. And yeah, so at this point, I've kind of like shut things down again because the only guys that I've like have been in my world have been young guys and I just can't do that. Wow, that's interesting. It's got to help your ego, though, a little bit. There's not... Uh... It's weird to me, though. I'm like, dude, I could be your mother. Come on now. Anyway, but but let me say this about, about all those individuals, those three individuals. They have good hearts and good souls. We'll remain friends from now till the end of time. And so, like, I, I'm at least thankful... Yeah, you know, I didn't let jackasses into my world, it, even though they were young and I, I chose, I was like, I don't want young again. I was, I'm still thankful that they have substance and class and, and, and have a, a beautiful heart. So now, obviously there's no independent shows going on now, but if anyone wants to book you for an autograph session, or I don't know if you still will be a manager, if someone wanted to book you, is there a email where they can reach out to you yeah so so i really quickly i'll give you all the the deets you ready um first of all if you call yourself a fan of mine um you will become part of my um live stream because i love 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 to talk to my fans that's so awesome for me so i do it every sunday monday and wednesday 7 to 8 30 sometimes if i start late then we go late sometimes like the the times are never hard and fast um you know sometimes i go i, I did a 12 hour stream um i'll probably do another one anyway um but yeah that's where 12 I'm, hour straight isn't that crazy 12 hours straight How did like, you do that Dude, I don't know, but I did it. I did it. And I'll what well, actually let me tell you how I did it. The fans, like they were there and they were um some people were there for the entire 12 hours. And then again, it would be some people coming and going and whatever. And it was just, it was like once I was like tired, it would be like this resurgence of energy because new people came in and it was just, it was, it was actually awesome to be honest with you. It it, it sounds daunting. But it was really cool. Um, but yeah, so it, to book me, it's um, bookterryrunnels at gmail.com. All of my social media is the Terry Runnels, T G T E R R I R U N N E L S. Um, and 
Yeah, I, that that's everything. I, we we just changed over from uh, D Live to Twitch, so the new Twitch address for the live stream is twitch.tv forward slash the Terry Reynolds. Um, so yeah, I would love to say hello to you guys and it makes me happy to join in. And also I have collectors that, you know, they, they'll send me, um, requests of what they want to buy. And, um, I usually, what my, my deal is I say to them, give me your budget because, it takes too much time for me to show you every single thing I have in all different price brackets. But if you'll give me your, your price range, I'll send you pictures of what's available in that price range. And so, um, yeah, like I love great collectors and yeah, it's just nice to be with my fans. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you being so generous with your time. Any final message, uh, to the fans here today? Um, just thank you. Like, thank you for like all the love and support. Um, thank you for supporting, uh, Hannibal and this channel and, um, you guys really make us, it, it's interesting. I recently forgive my nails. I haven't been able to see my nail lady. Oh, let's see them. Oh, they're, they're see, natural. It's like nubbins. It's like nubbins that I want to well, find. You're working on a farm, right? <sighs> Holy sweet Jesus. Anyway, um, what was I saying? I just got derailed because of my nails. What was I saying? You were you were closing it off with uh, thanking all the fans and how great they are. I know, but I was saying something. Dang. We we can't we we can't rewind, can we? I can chop that out. I can um I, I forget what you were getting into before you got distracted by your nails. Right? Nice I was like, oh, pull those back. Oh, shit. What was I saying? Dad nabbit. Come you on, help fucking, me. I, I wish I could rewind, but I don't know. I got distracted by your nails, too. Damn it. Anyway, I don't know. It, it, okay. If, if when, you, when you edit this. Yes. First of all, I hope you'll keep all the good content in. Um, second of all, when you get to the point where we both got derailed, call me and I'll, I'll call in and we'll do a, like, we'll do a little fill in little moment. Sounds good. Any it's makeup like, advice for the ladies watching this? Um, well, I call it my, my, um, smoke and mirrors. And it's funny. I do S and M like I'll, I'll write on on social media, like no S and M tonight. And, you know, of course people think that's, you know, not the kind of S and M I'm talking about. Right. But yeah. So like, no, I'm like, I have white eyelashes, white eyebrows. Like my hair is like my, my birth hair is red, but every hair on my body is like white blonde. It's crazy. So yeah, if I didn't have all this makeup on, I would just be, you can see, go to my, go to my, um, I think there's some on my YouTube channel, go and subscribe and like, and hang out with me there too. What is your YouTube channel? It is the Terry Reynolds. The Terry Reynolds. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot again. It's been, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I've seen you in person a few times, but your line has been too big. For me to oh. say hi at a couple of conventions, so. Uh, well, you know, you're in Canada, right? Yes. Yeah, so I was supposed to do a Niagara Falls um, show oh, in, June, in June. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy that booked me for that, in fact, we had a meeting today at 2 p.m. that we canceled and postponed until tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I, I will see you soon. I'll, I'll be up there in Canada soon, so. Yeah, like come over, but you here's what you have to do because I see so many faces. You have to come over and whisper in my ear or tell somebody who you are so I can run and hug you and say hello. Well, you'll remember me by the time this comes out because I post like a lot of clips, so there's going to be maybe four or five clips of this interview plus the full interview after. So a lot of people will see this and associate you with me. So hopefully by the time you see me in September, 
you'll remember me. Yay. It's, it's been awesome, Devin. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.